A vehicle approaches a toll booth while being cleaned, with numerous employees in hazmat suits disinfecting the surroundings. The truck driver passes through the toll booth and accuses the employees of slowing him down, but the staff assure him that nothing is wrong and that the area is only being cleansed due to a minor leak at a neighboring nuclear facility. He gets distracted by his ringing phone as he passes the toll booth and accidentally drives over a doe. He goes back in his vehicle and drives away after assessing the area. Despite the accident, the doe staggers to its feet and turns to reveal that it is afflicted. In the meantime, Sukwu is a busy fund manager in Seoul who hardly has time for his daughter Suen, let alone his divorce. Suen reveals that she wishes to see her mother in Busan after a tough day at work and mistakenly purchasing the same birthday present he purchased last year. Sukwu is first hesitant because of work, but his mother persuades him differently by showing him a video of Suen singing Aloha Oe at a school performance, she stops singing in the midst of the song, which he was unable to attend because of work. Sukwu booked the next KTX train to Busan the next morning out of remorse. Sukwu takes Suen to the station early in the morning, only to nearly collide with an incoming swarm of ambulances and police cars. Suen reaches out the car window and catches an ember in her palm, causing Sukwu to see the burning structure in the distance. He mentions that something is wrong, but drives to the station nevertheless. They board the train, which also has the tough working class husband Sangwa and his pregnant wife Song Kayong, a high school baseball team, the rich but selfish CEO Yan Suk, and a pair of elderly sisters, In Gil and Jong Gil as well as a homeless man who appears to be aware of the zombie situation. As the train is about to depart, a spasming young woman boards with a massive bite wound on her leg. Outside the train, the station manager orders the KTX to go, only to observe a gathering of people yelling at something invisible on top of the station's steps. Suen looks out the window as the manager is accosted by a vicious human, which she observes. Suen gets up, terrified, to use the restroom. A train attendant stumbles, discovers the sick lady in the lower numbered carriages and attempts to revive her, only for the woman to complete her change. The zombie then hooks onto the attendant's neck, causing him to panic and crash into the baseball team's car. The two then collapse to the ground, both zombies. The two then attack the majority of the baseball team, spawning a swarm of zombies in the process, only four pupils survive baseball player Yongguk, his crush Jin Hee, and two unknown lads. While the zombies rush to infect everyone in their path, Suen unintentionally heads towards the lower compartments in search of a restroom. Sukwu awakens to find Suen missing from her seat. He then receives a phone call from a co-worker informing him that violent riots have broken out throughout Korea. Soon after, a swarm of terrified people from the lower compartments rush past his seat, shouting and running. Sukwu flees in the other way, thinking Suen is in danger, and finds Suen standing in front of an incoming army of zombies. He takes her, and they are pursued by the throng, but Sukwu manages to enter his compartment and attempts to shut it, nearly keeping Sangwa and Song Kayang out. The survivors fight to block the entrance only to discover that the zombies are unable to open it and just attack at the sight of humanity. Song Kyung covers the windows with water and newspapers, which alleviates the situation by convincing the zombies that they are not present. The conductor informs the survivors over the intercom that the train will not travel to Busan, but will instead halt at Taegu Station since the military has been ordered there. Yansuk phones his corporate friends to inquire about the situation in Taegu, which Sukwu overhears and concludes that all arriving passengers in Taegu would be forced to be confined. He calls a co-worker privately and gets him to take him and Suen up separately so they won't be confined. When the train arrives at the abandoned Taegu station, Sukwu directs Suen to the east exit, where they would be met, while the others proceed to the main exit. After overhearing Suk Phone Wu's call, the homeless guy pursues him. The three go down the corridor, when they notice a soldier in the distance. Suk Wu, relieved, 
instructs Suan to stay where she is and runs towards the soldier for assistance, only to discover that he is hurt. The soldier begs them to save him before a swarm of infected soldiers surrounds him and tramples and consumes him. The last survivors make their way out the main exit. The survivors notice a big number of uniformed men towards the foot of the escalator and realize the troops are all infected, and the deployment has failed. As they run back up the escalator and into the station, several people are devoured and infected. Suk Wu, who is still within the station concourse and is being chased by zombies, advises Suan to flee. As she does so, she runs into Song Kyung and Sangwa, who are also running back to the train with the others. Sangwa fights off the horde alongside Suk Wu, Yong Guk, and the two other baseball players, while Song Kyung snatches Suan and rushes to the platform. They dash to the train after successfully locking the departure door. When Yong Tu Guk's pals reach the platform, they are attacked and infected. Meanwhile, Jin He, Yan Suk, and a few others have boarded the train safely. When a glass bridge above the train shatters, zombies showered down on the platform, Song Kyung and Suan board as well. One of the zombies attacks In Gil and Zhang Gil, separating them. Zhang Gil is pulled inside Jin compartment he's as In Gil, Song Kyung, and Suan flee in the opposite way. While Yong Guk, Suk Wu, and Sang Hwa successfully enter a safe compartment, Song Kyung, Suan, In Gil, and the homeless man lock themselves inside a lavatory in one of the lower contaminated compartments. Sangwa contacts his wife and discovers she is confined in the restroom with a few other people. Unwilling to let them perish, the three of them start battling their way into the lower compartments to save them. They realize that the zombies are blind in the dark and only respond to sound. They take advantage of this and successfully rescue them, and they all rush together to the first compartment, where Yan Suk, Jin He, Zhang Gil, and the manager are. Yong Guk texts Jean He that the survivors have been rescued and are on their way to her compartment. When she cheerfully informs the others, they are hostile and decide to lock the entrance to their compartment to prevent the group from entering. With the door locked, Yong Guk tries to bust it open, while Suk Wu and Sung Hwa try to keep the zombies on the other side out. Sung Hwa tells Suk Wu to take care of his wife and leave him behind to distract the zombies, realizing that there isn't enough time. Suk Wu apologizes sadly and releases go of the door, leading Suan and Song Kyung towards the barred door. Sung Hwa manages to inform his wife the name he has chosen for their newborn boy before he is eaten. The locked door is torn down, and the survivors securely pile into the compartment, there is a second door within the compartment, which they seal, however In Gil is too slow and gets devoured. Suk Wu angrily hits Yan Suk and wants to know why he did such a thing, realizing that Sung Hwa and In Gil may have lived if the gang hadn't closed the entrance. Yan Suk, unable to answer, lies to the others and asserts that Suk Wu and his pals are sick. They push Suk Wu and the party who just entered the compartment, now joined by Jin He, into the corridor between their compartment and the conductor's vehicle instilling panic in the first group that barred the door. Yan Suk and the others use their neckties and shirts to tie down the knob and prevent them from entering again. Zhang Gil, still stunned and speechless after seeing her sister's untimely death, recognizes at face Gil's among the zombies in the doorway. She informs her infected sister that she had a long and fruitful life, and she knows that the compartment group's efforts have resulted in her sister's death. Zhang Gil unlocks the door, enabling the zombies to flood the secure compartment, out of rage and defeat. The survivors can only watch as the gang is devoured within the compartment, they see shadows of people urgently clawing at the door they just barricaded in a horrible twist of fate. The conductor gets radio information that Busan has successfully resisted zombie infestation. However, when they approach a stop just before Busan, the train is blocked off by track debris. Over the speaker,
the conductor advises the surviving survivors aboard the train that he will find another train on an unblocked track to travel to Busan and that they should follow him, but wishes them luck because they would have to depart the train and survive traversing the zombie-infested rails. He departs his cockpit and finds an open road, where he discovers a cargo train. He revs it up and continues driving down the track towards Busan, looking for survivors. Sukwu and the others depart the train, unaware that Yan Suk had escaped the zombie horde in the compartment, by hiding in the bathroom. He hears the conductor's statement as well and fights his way out of the compartment, but numerous zombies pursue him as he exits. Meanwhile, Suk Squad Wu's is approaching the freight train. A blazing freight car races towards them, and Jin He and Yong Guk are separated from the gang when the runaway freight collides with the cars of a neighboring railway, causing them to tumble and obstruct their route. They enter one of the next train carriages and exit via the door, not realizing that Yan Suk, who is being hunted by a zombie, is following them. Yan Suk gets into the car and tosses Jin He behind him, killing her. Yong Guk fights off the zombie and collapses to the ground, clutching Jin He in his arms. Yan Suk ignores them, prying the door open and running for the freight train. As Jin He chokes and begins to change, Yong Guk sobs, wondering why fate had to be this way. As she completely fills his face and throat, he apologizes to Jin He for not telling her how he felt about her. Yan Suk rushes towards the freight train but sprains his ankle on the rails, and one of the zombies tailing him bites his ankle. The conductor runs off the train to assist, but Yan Suk betrays him and abandons him to the undead, just as he did Jin He. As he boards the train alone, he ignores the conductor's cries for assistance. Meanwhile, the homeless guy, Suen, Suk Wu, and Song Kyung are stuck under a train full of zombies on the opposite side of the wreckage. The train's windows are on the verge of collapsing at any minute. Suk Wu discovers an entrance beneath the train and begins to climb through it, but a section of the railway falls and shuts the hole before the other three can enter. The collision also shatters a window, allowing a small swarm of zombies to escape and approach the three. The homeless guy, however, sacrifices himself to the zombies at the last moment, allowing Suk Wu to drag the rubble aside for Song Kyung and Suen to escape. They dash towards the freight train and get onto its outside platform. When Suk Wu notices Yan Suk on the conductor's seat, milky-eyed and sick, he backs away. He immediately closes the door, but Yan Suk, although becoming a zombie, unlocks it since the virus has not reached his brain. Yan Suk approaches Suk Wu and begs him to take him back to Busan, babbling like a child and reciting his address and mother's name. Yan Suk is surprised and weeps when Suk Wu informs him that he is infected, but he is fully changed within seconds. Suk Wu starts fighting with the zombified Yan Suk and nearly falls off the car's ledge. Suen screams on the opposite side of the vehicle platform, attracting Yan Suk, who attacks Song Kyang and Suen. However, Suk Wu steps in and bites his hand brutally. He successfully throws Yan Suk from the automobile but discovers his wounds. He places Suen and Song Kyung in the cockpit and instructs them on how to apply the brakes once they arrive at Busan Station. He then tries to get out of the car, but Suen begs him not to and explains that on the day of her performance, she didn't finish singing Aloha O.E. because she didn't see Suk Wu in the crowd, she had been saving the song for her father. The two exchange emotional goodbyes, and Suk Wu takes Su Little An's hands in his before flinging them away and shutting himself out of the cockpit. Su An starts screaming and crying for him to return. Suk Wu sobs as he moves towards the end of the train car, gripping his bloodied hand, while the infection spreads. Su An continues to scream for him inside the cockpit, despite Song Effort's Kyung's to restrain her. He approaches the back of the train car gently, fighting the virus, and recalls Suen as an infant. The virus takes hold as he recalls his best memories of cuddling her and touching her little fingers and toes, like he did in the cockpit previously, his eyes turning white and veins turning black. Despite being completely zombified, 
Suk Woo continues to think of Suen and grins blissfully towards the sky before sliding from the car and into the tracks, it is left ambiguous as to whether this was due to his body spasming, or him jumping off the car in an act of suicide to keep Suen and Song Kyung safe. Finally, the train car arrives in the tunnel leading to Busan Station. However, the track is obstructed by debris. The two exit the vehicle and continue going along the tunnel, unaware that the Busan military is watching them from the other side. One of the snipers reports their approach to his boss, who orders him to shoot them down because they can't determine if they're infected or not in the dark. Suen begins to mournfully sing Aloha Oe just as the sniper is ready to draw the trigger, rallying the fatigued Song Kyung to trek to the end of the tunnel. When the troops hear her music, they understand they are not sick and rush to their rescue.